Namaste. Welcome to Agriculture Affairs in Nepal with me, Nirmala Basnet. Dear viewers, let us now start the program with the main affairs of the day. Commodity imports have declined by 10% in the first four months of the current fiscal year 2077-78. Attraction towards agriculture and forestry industries is increasing in Nawalparasi. In the Faktanglung village of Taplejung, the production of potatoes has decreased. Plus more. Let us continue the program with the progress of the agriculture minister. Nepali Agriculture Ministry was established in 1952 AD. This is part of Nepali government body. It was established to improve agriculture in Nepal. The ministry that we know today came into form in 1974. Before that, it was called the Department of Agriculture. This ministry aims to improve production through improved irrigation, improved methods of farming, if improved variety of seeds, improved fertilizer, etc. Now the ministry aims to keep the youth at home by different programs and incentives. However, the ministers who hold the office have not been able to be successful. It cannot be understood why the ministers are not able to carry out the plans. This next report is on our current minister. It has been one year since Agriculture Minister Gansam Vushal took over the ministry. During his time, Vushal has managed to establish himself as a talking minister who gives less work and more gossip. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. It has been one year since Agriculture Minister Ghansham Vushal took over the ministry. During his reign, Vushal has managed to establish himself as a talking minister who gives less work and more gossip. Ghansham Vushal was not very enthusiastic when Chakra Mani Canal was removed and was handed over the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock in November last year. Perhaps he was expecting another ministry. Gradually, he began to see the potential in agriculture. He started drowning in it from morning till night. Vushal, who created an image of an ideological communist leader, did not even appear in public for a long time after being given the responsibility of the Ministry of Agriculture. Many farmers and the general public expected him to do a lot of work after becoming the Agriculture Minister. However, even for a year, he did not work very well. Speaking at a press conference three months after assuming the responsibility of the ministry, Minister Vushal had made public five action plans saying that there are many challenges to bring change in the agriculture sector. Many farmers and the general public expected him to do a lot of work after becoming the agriculture minister. However, even in the year he was the minister of agriculture, he did not seem to be able to give significant results. He put forward five main action plans to provide subsidy on production materials, door-to-door -door technical services to the farmers, cheap and accessible loans, mandatory crops and livestock insurance, and guarantee minimum savings. However, even after one year of his time as agriculture minister, his main plans have been overshadowed. Vushal has failed to work as a farmer and agri friend as per the plan. Farmers have criticized Vushal for not being able to distribute manure to vegetable farmers, milk farmers, and other farmers for a period of one year. Similarly, the farmers have complained to Minister Vushal saying that they have not been able to pay the poultry traders, billy goat traders, and sugarcane farmers in the Tarai for years. In Nepal, on the one hand, farmers have not received government assistance, while the produce has not been able to find market, due to which the farmers have been affected. Farmers who have been suffering from shortage of manure for years have been affected by shortage of manure this year as well. Farmers have complained that the government has ignored them even after waiting in line for two days for five kilos of fertilizer. Even in this winter, farmers are forced to face 
shortage of fertilizer. It is said that Minister Vushal did not pay enough attention to work in all the schemes, including research, commercialization, marketing, disease-free animal husbandry, organic agriculture, food and nutrition, security, and food hygiene. In June, the government had fixed the support price of coarse paddy at 2,735 rupees and medium paddy at 2,885 rupees, including transportation fare. However, traders, cooperatives, and government have not bought paddy at that price. Farmers have complained that Minister Vushal has fixed the price of paddy in a hurry. Minister Vushal has not reached Kalimati to monitor the vegetable market. Earlier, Minister Chakra Pani Kanal had said that he would break up the syndicate in Kalimati, but he did not do that. The government has allocated 34 arba, 80 crore for agriculture and livestock development for next year. The government has allocated budget for the use of arable land, irrigation, rural roads, rural electrification, market, and storage of products. It was announced to expand the program of the Prime Minister's Agriculture Modernization Project to 69,000 hectares through an additional 39 zones with 31 special crops and 8 animal husbandry by making certain criteria of agriculture pocket, block, zone, and super zone. There are also plans to determine the zones of buckwheat and soybean based on feasibility. 8 arba, 10 crore, was allocated for this program. Programs including grants for agriculture inputs, concessional loans for agribusiness, and capital grants for mechanization were put forward. The programs of the current fiscal year have not moved forward. The Prime Minister's Agriculture Modernization Project program put forward by the government aimed to significantly improve agriculture production. The modernization project has not been able to do much in agriculture. The government has been saying that it is becoming self-sufficient in the production of wheat, vegetables, paddy, maize, fish, banana, nuts, leeches, and other agriculture products. There is no 20-year agriculture development strategy. The government does not seem to add a new dimension to Nepal's agriculture revolution. Under this strategy, the government announced to make Nepal self-sufficient in food, increase employment, guarantee food and nutrition security, link agriculture with the world market, commercialize farmers in agriculture, operate agricultural markets and promotion centers in each state and establish agriculture produced procurement centers. The main tasks within the strategy are in confusion. The government had put forward a plan to remove the compulsion of the youth to go abroad to work in few years if they work with the agriculture sector as priority. However, all these plans have been limited to just talks. After the news report, let us now talk about import and export this year. The world is connected through network of commerce. This brings closer to home the things that are produced far away. In a way, this creates a global family. This is quite a pretty picture when we do not think about the politics and economical competition that goes around the world. The developed world produces the most and takes up most of the market world over. Nepal is a tiny part of world business scene. The Nepali traders have tiny portion of the international market. Yet, for the country as a whole, it is very important and plays a huge part in the lives of the people in Nepal. Commodity imports have declined by 10% in the first four months of the current fiscal year 2077-78. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. Commodity imports have declined by 10% in the first four months of the current fiscal year 2077-78. Commodity exports have also increased by 10%. Commodity imports have declined by 10% in the first four months of the current fiscal year. Total merchandise imports declined by 10% in July-October period, while exports increased by 10% in the same period, according to the Customs Department. According to the department, goods worth 4 karba, 2 arba have been imported in the first four months, which was 4 karba, 
5 arba in the corresponding period of the previous year. Similarly, goods worth 40 arba, 20 crore have been exported. A total of 36 arba, 27 crore worth was exported in the corresponding period of the previous fiscal year. Goods worth 1 karba, 10 arba were imported in Kartik, which is 4.45% less than last year. Goods worth 9 arba, 15 crore were exported in Kartik, an increase of 2.3% over the same period last year. Commodity imports declined by 10% while revenue collection declined by 0.58%. In the first four months of the last year, one karva, 22 arba, 97 crore rupees was collected as revenue, and this year, one karva, 22 arba, 25 crore has been collected. After the news report on import and export, let us now talk about the migration for the winter. The cold in Nepal has increased. The mountainous districts are now suffering from severe cold. The people are preparing to migrate to warmer south along with their sheep and other animals. The cold in the upper part of Nepal is unbearable. The life there gets very hard. The Nepali government should look into this problem. We know that mountains are hard to tame. So what should the people do? The forested areas up in the mountains have also decreased, so the firewoods for heating is not readily available. The mountain people should be managed. We need international help for solving this problem. The life in the mountains is too hard. With the onset of cold weather, shepherds of Rakum East have started migrating in the valley along with their sheep. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. With the onset of cold weather, shepherds of Rakum East have started migrating in the valley along with their flocks. Shepherds from different areas of Bhutan, Uttarganga and Bhumi villages of the district have descended to the valley in search of warm place with their flocks of sheep. It is said that the shepherds have migrated in search of a warm place after the extreme cold in Rukum East, the only mountainous district of Lumini State. Shepherds from one part of the district have migrated in places including Rukum West, Salyan, Rolpa, Dang, and Surkhet. According to the farmers, the sheep cannot survive in the district at this time due to the extreme cold. According to the shepherds, after the death of the sheep in the district due to the cold at this time, the herds of sheep have to be brought down the valley by the last week of Kartik every year. Almost everyone has brought the sheep in the valley. Now there are only one or two herds in the village, and these herds are also being prepared to brought down to the valley. After the news report on migration, let us now talk about agriculture industries in Nawal Barashi. This is changing time for Nepal. The Nepali people are exposed to the outside world. This has given the Nepali youth new vision and newfound love for their country. Many people who have returned to Nepal after working abroad are engaged into agriculture industries. Especially now that the corona has caused so much suffering, the mankind is really afraid to travel. This is keeping them at home working on barren land. In Nawal Barasi, the agriculture industry is fast expanding. This is a great news for the country. Attraction towards agriculture and forestry industries is increasing in Nawal Barashi. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. Attraction towards agriculture and forestry industries is increasing in Nawal Barashi. Especially young people and women returning from abroad are returning to commercial agriculture enterprises. According to the Home and Small Industries Office, agriculture and forestry industries have been growing in the district recently. Most of the last registered industries are related to agriculture and forestry. According to Netra Prasad Vashal, head of the office, 263 agriculture industries have been added to the list of small-scale industries registered in the first quarter of the current fiscal year 2077-78 BS. After the news report from Nawal Parashat, let us now take a small commercial break. Stay with Krishi Television.
After the commercial break, welcome back to Agriculture Affairs in Nepal. To your viewers, let us now talk about chili pocket area. I recently read that chilies are considered as superfood. They are supposed to be packed with vitamins and minerals. Chilies were first cultivated in Mexico. Chilies are found used in medicines in Mexico. The surprise is that the chili is grown in China the most. It is also consumed in China the most. If you are lover of chili hot food and you have strong tolerance to the taste, you will be benefiting a lot from consuming chilies. Chilies are used in Indian and Nepali cooking as well. A lot of the people of South Asia here are fond of chili hot food. The Nepali local level of Kanchanpur is realizing its potential here and has allocated an area of chili pocket. In Bedkot municipality of Kanchanpur, there will be operation of chili pocket area. The pocket area will be operated with the financial support of UNDP and Bedkot municipality. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. In Bedkot municipality of Kanchanpur, there will be operation of chili pocket area. The pocket area will be operated with the financial support of UNDP and Bedkot municipality. Under the COVID-19 response socio-economic recovery project organized by Sweet Nepal, Vetkot Municipality, Ward number 5 and 6 has inaugurated the pocket area there on Tuesday. The project will benefit 50 farmers. Farmers have been provided seeds, tools, fertilizers and other items for the chili pocket area. At least three to five plots of land will be used for the construction of pocket area. After the news on Chili Pocket, let us now talk about Mega City Project. Nepal is developing through different projects, the road networks, agriculture sector, education sector, etc. are all developing in the country. Cities also need to be organized as the Nepali cities have been developing in over capacity of the space. Yet there's another project with city development. The new cities need to be planned such that the urban dwellers are connected to nature and at the same time have all the infrastructure required for living a safe life. The children and youths should have playgrounds. The sanitation and safe drinking water should be available. The city should not be overpopulated. Of course, the city should have fresh agriculture produced, which is safe. We will see what will happen next in the development of Nepal. Inarua municipality is going to receive one and a half Arba rupees through Mega City project. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. Inarua municipality is going to receive one and a half Arba rupees through Mega City project. Inarua, which is among the top six municipalities selected by the Ministry of Development on the basis of performance appraisal, will receive the amount for wider development. While monitoring the plan implemented by the ministry, the team members said that the Inarua municipality will get 1.5 Arba rupees. The municipality, which uh, was earlier selected in the Smart City Project, has succeeded in being included in the Mega City Project this time. With the support of ADB, the Ministry has launched a Mega City Project under the Integrated Development Project. The Ministry of Urban Development has stated that Inarua will receive additional assistance as it has been able to complete the work uh, in the urban areas on time. It has also been successful in transparency and evaluation among the areas where the project has been implemented. After the news report, let us now talk about grass seeds. Grass seeds of foreign varieties and local varieties are found to be grown for animals. The Nepali farmers wonder about the type of grass that is used abroad and want to use the same kind of grass and fodder. From my own observation, the local varieties of grass and fodder are softer than those brought from abroad, but it is farmers' choice on what they use. We should keep in mind that we should save the indigenous biodiversity. When the grass or vegetation is brought in Nepal, the local varieties might be replaced. As a result, our natural vegetation may be invaded and wiped out if we are not careful what we grow here. 
Galian municipality has distributed grass seeds to the farmers as the attraction of farmers towards commercial animal husbandry is increasing. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. Galian municipality has distributed grass seeds to the farmers as the attraction of farmers towards commercial animal husbandry is increasing. The grass seeds have been distributed to the farmers under the coordination of the animal husbandry branch of the municipality. The municipality has been conducting various programs targeting the farmers to help the production of the farmers and the grass seeds have been distributed under the same campaign. The seeds have been distributed to make the municipality self-sufficient in milk and meat. In addition, improved varieties of grass seeds have been distributed to reduce the production cost of milk and meat. According to the Animal Husbandry Branch, seeds of joe under winter grass and monsoon varieties of grass have been distributed. Farmers have started to be attracted towards commercial animal husbandry after the municipality started giving subsidy of 15 rupees per liter to milk producing farmers. After the news report on grass, let us now talk about food transportation. Food transportation to upper part of Nepal is always a problem. Now the winter is setting in and the snowfall is around the bend. Snowfall in the mountains caused a lot of problems in living a normal life. The mountains are very hard for life. The food does not grow well there so the people have to bring the food from the outside. The transportation is difficult because the road networks are very dangerous during the monsoon. During the winter, the snow makes transportation very hard. The forested areas are deteriorated and the fuel for cooking is very dear. People are not educated and conscious enough to replant trees. The Nepali government should think of resettling the people from the mountains in countries with vast expense of land like Australia and Canada. The transportation of food to Upper Dolpa, which had been halted for two years, has now resumed. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. The transportation of food to Upper Dolpa, which had been halted for two years, has now resumed. The rice transportation has moved ahead after the food management and trading company Karnali Pradesh issued a tender for the transportation of food grains to Upper Dolpa. It is said that the food transportation will be completed in Upper Dolpa before the snowfall starts. The food management and trading company Limited has signed a contract to transport rice to Dolpa Buddha, Charka. Tangsung and Safe Oksundo villages of Upper Dolpa. Dinesh Construction Materials Suppliers Banke has been entrusted with the responsibility of transporting food grains on the basis of negotiations at all the three local levels. Rice will be transported from Surkhet to Dolpa by land and delivered to the concerned local level. The company has stated that rice will be transported to Do at 8,480 rupees per quintal to Dhargaon at 9,490 rupees per quintal and to Saldang at 10,995 rupees per quintal. During the last financial year, there was no transportation of subsidized rice to Dolpa and there are more problems due to corona this year. After the news report on food transportation, let us now talk about potato production. The Nepali mountain people depend upon the production of potatoes for the staple diet. The mountains are a good place for growth of apples and potatoes. The life there is supported mainly by these two crops. According to the report that we have received here at Krishi Television, the potato production has declined this year. So much that the locals are saying that they need to bring potato seeds from some place else. This is a real harsh reality for the mountain people. The best we can do for them is relocate them. Let us now look at this news report for a little while. In the Faktang Lung village of Taplejung, the production of potatoes has decreased. The production has been declining for some years now and this year it has become zero. According to the locals, there is a need to find seeds from other places for the coming season as there is no production in the areas where potato is produced. According to the locals, potato production has come down as most of the potato producing areas have started turning into alpine pasture. Gunsa, which is located Almost 3,400 meters above the sea level used to produce 100 mori potatoes in just one season. The production used to be the same in the surrounding settlements, but it is gradually declining. 
the land is becoming barren and grazing areas for animals. This is all in Agriculture Affairs in Nepal with Minermala Bosnet. Before I go, let us review the main affairs of the day. Commodity imports have declined by 10% in the first four months of the current fiscal year 2077-78. Attraction towards agriculture and forestry industries is increasing in Nawalparasi. In the Thaktanglung village of Taplejung, the production of potatoes has decreased. Thank you for watching Agriculture Affairs in Nepal with Minermal Abbas. I'll be back with more affairs next time. Till then, Jai Krishi, Jai Kishan, Samrita Krishi, Nepal Kushan.